So you want to become a graphic designer in 2024. Here are some things that you can do today that will help get you closer to becoming the best graphic designer in the world. Do I need to study graphic design? What computer do I need? What is the best software? How can I improve my design skills? Do I need to be able to draw? How do I get clients? How much should I be charging? Well, welcome to Hansila, where I talk about all things to do with graphic design and running my own freelance graphic design business. I'm going to answer all the questions that you may have about starting out as a graphic designer, becoming a graphic designer, and other key things to consider when starting a career in graphic design. Or even if you just want to become a better graphic designer. I want to start this video off by saying you don't need to have the best equipment, you don't need to have the latest and best and specced out computer, or even a degree in graphic design but you will need a computer, a mouse and a keyboard. You will also need a vector-based software or program, a raster-based software or program, a sketchbook, some pens, and you do need passion for solving visual problems. And lastly, you also need the drive to continue to learn things every single day. Those for me are probably the non-negotiables in becoming a graphic designer. Now, what exactly is graphic design? Because you kind of need to know what you're signing up for. In simple terms, graphic design is visual communication. We are visual problem solvers. We create visual solutions based off of a specific brief given to us by a client. But what does that even mean? Well, a client will come to us with a brief and in this brief, there are a whole bunch of specifications that we need to follow. This brief is basically their request that they're asking us to do, but it will come in all these different little bits and pieces like this kind of scattered all over the place. And it's our job to take all of these individual pieces of information that kind of don't work together. And we will then piece together all these little pieces. I should have brought tape to do this. I don't know why I didn't. But as you can see, it's starting to like come together. There, <laughs> the last piece will come in here like that. It's our job as graphic designers to take all those individual pieces and piece them together and to create one visual complete design out of all of their various requirements. <laughs> Now, usually there is a CTA, which is a call to action that is involved. So we are required to prompt the viewer to feel or act a certain way. For example, creating a social media post for a Black Friday sale, the call to action would be to drive the viewer to a website to purchase from the sale. Or another example would be creating a social or political awareness poster to encourage the viewers to make a change or take a stand. Graph design is a very broad and versatile career but we will chat about that further along in the video of all the different areas of graphic design that you can go into. The big question is, drum roll, do I need to study graphic design? Do I need a degree? Do I need to go to university? So this is a loaded question, but the short answer is no. And the long answer is, I would recommend it, but that's only because I went to university for graphic design. I have my honors degree in graphic design, but no, you don't need to go and get a degree to become a successful graphic designer. As I said, yes, I personally do have my honors degree in graphic design. I did the whole shebang and if I went back in time, I would still go to university again for graphic design. But in essence, you can become a very successful graphic designer without any sort of formal training or formal qualification. Why? Because you're not hired based on your degree, you're hired based on your portfolio and whether or not you have the skills necessary to complete certain tasks that the client or a design agency requires from you. Clients have something that needs to be done and they wanna know whether or not you can do it really well. It's that simple. So if you have mastered your graphic design skills, if you have an amazing portfolio, portfolio that blows the socks off of your clients, then you've set yourself up for success. To be a great graphic designer though, you do need to know the fundamentals of graphic design. You need to be able to think beyond the brief that the client has given you. You should understand more than just the visual side of things, but also the back end side, the strategic approach, all that strategy and thinking behind every single creative decision that you make. The great thing about going to university is that you are taught the industry standard of graphic design and the processes and all the projects that you do at university help go towards your portfolio. But you can still learn all of this by yourself without going to university. You can still create a portfolio by yourself without going to university. It just takes a bit more researching and it may take a little bit more time. At university, you are also taught how to draw, how to ideate, how to think outside the box, how to challenge yourself, the history of graphic design, how to communicate visually. You are taught design techniques, software programs, photography, 
photography, color theory, grid systems, print and digital, file types, business studies, professional design practice, and many other things. But again, you can learn all of this by yourself without studying, without getting a degree. At university, these subjects and topics are just incorporated into the syllabus. And you're also surrounded by lectures all the time. So if you're someone like me that loves to ask questions and always wants to learn and grow and know what's going on, I had those lectures available to ask questions, to explain things, to go deeper into a certain topic. It's nice to have lectures there that can answer your questions straight away. And the lectures also push you to constantly think deeper, go beyond and really like, go into you about like thinking you know graphic design is very much involved with thinking because it's so visual we need to basically think of the best and simplest approach to get something that's generally quite complicated and make it very simple and easy for people to understand for me graphic design can be quite a universal language because not all design uses typography and, and copywriting so sometimes it's just a visual we have that power to communicate with people visually that doesn't involve using languages we can use icons think of emojis think of pictograms things like that if you go to another country and you don't speak their language but you know exactly where to find the bathroom because of the bathroom icon because we all know what a bathroom icon looks like and that's because of graphic designers if you need to catch a taxi somewhere we all know what a taxi icon looks like, that's because of graphic designers. If you're crossing a road and there's different road signs, you can be in a different country but you understand what it means, graphic designers. So it's a very universal language and it's a type of visual language, visual communication. Going to university is also cool because it's a chance to network with your fellow classmates and further down the line in your career you might end up working with them, you might end up starting an agency with them and it's a really cool way to grow your network from university. But again, I will say it again, you do not need to go to university to become a great graphic designer. As long as you have a really good portfolio that shows your clients that you can do the work and do the work well, and if you have good people skills and good business skills, so you know how to market yourself and how to sell what you're doing, you will get clients and you will be successful. If you did not get a graphic design degree, I would recommend shadowing or doing an internship somewhere. By doing an internship, you learn, you understand the processes, how an agency works, the different roles, and how everything runs. You won't necessarily be paid for the internship because you are learning but it's giving you time to grow and learn and understand what you're doing because getting real life experience is really important especially in the graphic design career everything you learn at university is very different to the actual real life thing I'm sure that is for every single degree. I personally did a one month internship with a full service creative agency after I finished my degree. And then I got hired by that same company after I'd finished the one month internship. I learned so much during that one month internship. The key is to ask as many questions as possible because you're surrounded by highly skilled people that do this every day and this is their job, it's their career, it's what they do. They have the answers to your questions. And while you're doing an internship, you just have to learn as much as you can and your brain must be like a sponge and just soak up any and all information that's given to you. Being in a creative agency for an internship and learning how things happen, the process that they take, how they talk with real clients, like designers in an agency don't talk with clients. There's an AE for that, an accounts executive, and they will talk to clients and then they will give us the brief. So it was great. I didn't have to liaise with any clients. I didn't have to deal with any of that. If there was any brief that came in, it went through the AE. Any feedback, it went through the AE. Any revisions, it went through the AE. And then they would revert it all back to the designers. So in an agency setting, as a designer, you would never talk to the client. That's as a graphic designer. When I was an art director though, I did liaise with clients directly. It was also really exciting during my internship because I was working on real life projects when something went live on social media or if there was a print ad that went to print and I saw my design for the first time in a print ad or on social media. It was the most thrilling experience ever because I was like, oh my goodness, I did that. The university, it was projects that weren't going live. The first time I saw something of mine go live, I was like, <gasps> I was, 
it was the best feeling ever. Something that I would add about university though is you are not taught how to use your software and programs at university. At least at my university, they did not sit us down and be like, this is how you use Photoshop. This is how you use Illustrator. Like, no. We had to teach ourselves how to use the Adobe programs and all the shortcuts and whatnot. I think the only thing we were taught was how to use the pen tool in Illustrator. And I think we were taught how to create masks in Photoshop, but I think that's it. So even at university, you still had to be proactive. You still had to constantly learn. We weren't given things on a silver platter. We had to put the work in and go above and beyond if we wanted to excel. University just gives you this platform that allows you to have access to knowledge. You have the library there. You have design books. You have lectures. You have the internet. But you still need to do the hard work for it to pay off. Same as if you were teaching yourself graphic design. Also, we didn't even touch a computer in our first year at university. Well, I think maybe like in the last month of university of our first year we dabbled i think like one or two lessons but for the pretty much the whole of the complete first year of university we did not touch the computer it was pretty much solely dedicated to design techniques to drawing skills figure drawing, business studies, professional design practice, the history of graphic design, the basics of graphic design, the fundamentals of graphic design, the principles, understanding and analyzing different campaigns, visual and critical thinking, communication skills, strategy, and so on. No computers were used in the first year. We started computer work from second year. Okay, so now we have the big question of university and having a degree question out the way. Let's chat about other things you'll need to know if you want to become a successful skilled graphic designer. You need to take the time to learn the basic graphic design skills, which are the principles of graphic design. These include things like line, shape, space, balance, proximity, alignment, hierarchy, color, repetition, pattern, movement, contrast, proportion, all of those things, graphic design principles. Now you can easily learn these things from various graphic design books, educational YouTube channels like my YouTube channel, and there are lots of online resources, ebooks, blogs, short courses, you name it. There is so much information available out there to teach you. Learning those fundamental rules of graphic design will set you up with a strong design foundation. And with a strong foundation, you can do anything. Learning the basics will also make your process go a lot faster. It'll be much more enjoyable and save you a lot of time. And time is one of the most valuable assets that we as graphic designers have. Time is money in our line of work. The next important thing is learning and understanding color theory and color psychology. Now, color is one of my most favorite parts of graphic design, so much so that I actually, I have a entire book dedicated to the history of colors. <laughs> I love colors. I mean, look at this book. It literally has the history of every single color. Anyway, I digress, but color theory is a real thing. There's psychology behind all the different colors and their meanings and why colors are used for certain things in certain ways. Learning what these colors mean and how they can influence our decisions really comes in handy when you are a graphic designer because we want to make our viewers feel and act a certain way and color helps to influence certain decisions, even at a subconscious level. Like, have you ever wondered why McDonald's or KFC uses red in their branding there is actually a psychological reason behind that so definitely spend some time getting to know and understand color theory and color psychology and how it can change how humans perceive something another important aspect of becoming a great designer is knowing and understanding typography and the anatomy of type Typography is one of the most important sections of graphic design because it can literally make or break your design. And many designs use typography, so words, such as posters, flyers, magazine articles, newspapers, social media posts. Most stuff has typography. And going back to typography can literally make or break your design. Imagine seeing these at a preschool open day. The font in this one doesn't really match the vibe. I would much rather prefer to see something like this at a preschool than this. This. so can you see it's like simple things like that this is going to break the design this is going to make the design understanding font families typefaces ttf versus otf glyphs x heart tails kerning tracking leading serif sans serif descriptive fonts monospace ascenders consistency line length baseline grids alignment negative space when to use a drop shadow when not to use a drop shadow if you're on the fence you probably don't need a drop shadow we use typography all the time as graphic designers and i'd really spend a lot of time understanding the anatomy of type and also how to 
to manipulate typography, what tools you can use to manipulate typography. I could probably do an entire video on that because manipulating typography is probably one of the most important skills you can have as a graphic designer. Now, as a graphic designer, we not only need to be able to create ideas, but we need to be able to execute them as well. So creative thinking is very important. And this is something that can be practiced. You must learn to exercise your creative juices in your brain. So you should be challenging your brain. Don't just do the first thing that comes to your mind. Go beyond that. Think deeper. One exercise that can really help your creative thinking is mind mapping. It's such a simple exercise, but it does so many great things for your brain. It teaches you to make connections, to grow ideas. It forces your brain to branch away from the norm and to think further. Another exercise is to create mood boards and vision boards. And lastly, to sketch, which brings me to the next section, drawing and sketching. Do I need to draw to become a graphic designer? Well, technically you don't need to be able to draw to be a graphic designer, but it certainly helps and it will take you from being a good designer to a great designer. And the cherry on top is that every single person can learn to draw. It just takes practice, like every other skill in the world. Always sketch and draw your ideas first and then move to digital. So sketch first, and then go digital. You will save yourself a lot of time by doing this because instead of trying to think of concepts on your computer and digitally, you already nail your concept down in your sketching phase, like in your sketchbook on paper. And then when you move to digital, you literally either need to trace your sketch with the pen tool or just recreate the design in digital. But you've already got the concept, you know exactly what you're wanting to say, you just need to create it in a digital format. One of the exercises my lecturers made us do at university was we had to sketch out 50 different logos before we could even touch our computer. 50 different logos. This was for one project, so 50 designs, 50 scamps before we were allowed to go onto the computer. And that taught us the power of pen on paper because I knew exactly what my concept was. I knew exactly what I was going to say. I literally just needed to make it digital. And that made the design process so easy, simple, and quick. And I was very confident because I knew exactly what I was going to do for this logo. On the topic of sketching, another important piece of advice is always sketch in pen, never use a pencil. So if you're designing a logo and scamps or doing anything, anything at all, use a pen. Do not touch a pencil. Using a pen ensures that you don't spend your time erasing all your ideas away. And also you cannot be a perfectionist at the sketching stage of things. Get your ideas down, even if they're bad, if they look terrible, if you don't want anyone to see this, no one's going to see your sketchbook anyway. No one sees your sketches. Just get all your ideas down and never erase them. Now let's talk about graphic design software, graphic design programs. Adobe Creative Cloud is the industry standard. I don't use any other programs, so I can't speak for any other programs other than Adobe Creative Cloud. But if you are a student, they do offer a student discount on Adobe. And I know that they do a Black Friday sale as well every year. So you can maybe score a discount there. So staying on the topic of software and programs for graphic design, you must also understand the different programs that are available and what they are used for. This means understanding where, when, and what each of these programs are used for. And obviously you need to know how to use them as well. The most common programs that you will use is Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe InDesign, and Adobe Acrobat for a PDF reader. Learn and understand the different tools, the basics and the shortcuts for each of the programs. The nice thing about Adobe is that it's all synced. So a lot of the shortcuts are the same and a lot of the programs are interchangeable with each other. So it makes it really easy to learn. If you learn one program, you pretty much know how to use the next. So let me get a little breakdown. Illustrator, also known as AI, it's abbreviation, is a vector-based program. It is used for vector artworks. So things such as a logo design, icons, pattern, posters, business cards, illustrations, etc. Photoshop, aka PSD, is a roster-based program and it is used for photographs and things with pixels. Photo manipulation, you can use it for posters as well filters, edits, creating GIFs, that sort of stuff. And lastly, InDesign, also known as ID, is used for text-heavy, long-form publication documents. Things such as magazines, layouts, large documents with many pages, newspapers, brochures, presentations, portfolios, 
all of that jazz. Now you may use other programs such as Premiere Pro for video editing, After Effects for animations, and XD for UI design and web design, but you probably won't be using these programs as you're starting out as a graphic designer. These programs are not a priority when you're starting out, but these are really good programs to learn later on in your career if you want to grow your graphic design skills and be able to offer more to your clients. Talking about different programs and where and when to use them, you must understand the difference between raster and vector. Vector-based programs are infinitely scalable. It's created using maths, so points and lines. An example of this is Adobe Illustrator. Raster-based programs consist of millions and millions of little pixels. Think of a TV screen with like all those little dots and the fuzz. So anything that you create on a raster-based program, the moment you transform it or scale it up and down or manipulate it, it is going to pixelate. So this would be Adobe Photoshop. Therefore, never ever ever golden rule of graphic design never create a logo in photoshop or on any raster based program so procreate is another one if you use an ipad never design a logo on procreate it's a raster based program it will pixelate sorry now like all other careers graph design also has many different areas to it. Some graph designers choose to specialize in certain areas of graphic design and that way they are able to niche down into offering a very specific service to very specific clients. There are many different types of services in graphic design. Some of these areas include print and packaging, editorial design, website design, branding and logo design, branding and brand identities, brand strategy, pattern and textiles, illustration, social media, digital design, DTP which is desktop publishing which is basically the final step before stuff goes to print and the list goes on. When you're starting out as a graphic designer though, it is good to test the waters because you don't know if you enjoy something until you do it. So you've got to see which areas of graphic design you prefer. I personally am a full service designer, so I'd love to do all areas of graphic design. I've worked on print and digital and the whole shebang. I've been an art director. I've worked with stylists and photographers and models doing all of that stuff. I've worked with the, ho the whole thing, the whole thing. But I do have my favorites. Now let's move on to different machines, so computers and other hardware you may use as a graphic designer. In terms of what machine to use, Mac is great. It is expensive, but it's good quality. It works well with the Adobe software. Mac is reliable, it's efficient, it's easy to use, it's trustworthy, and also I think it's industry standard. I personally, at least in a professional setting, have never met a designer not using a Mac. So I would say Mac is industry standard. For my setup, none of this is sponsored, but I will walk you through every day what I use in my setup at my desk. So I use the MacBook Pro 2021 16 inch M1 Pro Max chip. Oh my goodness. The one terabyte with 32 gigs of RAM, the 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, 16 core NPU. I think that's all the specs. And then I connect it to my LG Ultrafon 27 inch 4K monitor. I use the USB-C to connect it. It's also nice because when it's connected, it charges my Mac at the same time because it's got the correct power outlet. I also use a, where is it? I also use a two terabyte Samsung T7 SSD as my external SSD. It's really fast, I love it. Basically, I transfer all my files to this external SSD as soon as I'm done with the project because none of my files will stay on my machine because I don't want it to slow down and to clutter it. So everything gets transferred onto this and then my machine runs very fast and it's free from all sorts of files. I also use the Apple Magic Keyboard. This is the international English version. I don't like the American English one nor the UK English one. So international English is good. And then for a mouse, I use the Logitech MX Master 3S for Mac. I don't know what it is with tech and having huge long names, but I love this thing. I can connect it up to three devices at one time. So I have connected to my main machine, which is my 2021 MacBook Pro, my old MacBook Pro. And then I also connected to my iPad Pro 13 inch, which I use for illustrating with my Apple Pencil. So those are the three devices that this mouse basically connects to. And to swap it, it literally has, there's a little button over here and I click, and then it just literally just swaps between the devices. It's, it's incredible, I love it. And then I also use my Wacom Interest Pro as my drawing tablet. So that's all the hardware that I can think of that stays on my desk basically and I use 
every single day that's part of just like my workflow those are the hardware obviously there are bits and pieces of random things like my ipods or my magsafe charger that sort of stuff but these are like the immediate stuff that i use every day in my business going back to macbooks i will always recommend a macbook pro over a macbook air just because a macbook air is kind of like a notebook and a macbook pro will be able to handle a lot more of our graphic design software and programs because sometimes it can be quite like intense what we need and heavy on the machines i just find macbook pros will run the design software much better and it'll be a lot smoother and quicker it also depends if you're going to be using more cpu or gpu so that just depends on the type of work you're doing and the type of softwares that you're running cpu is a central processing unit so things like figma which run off of a browser i do a lot of web design and ui design and i use figma for that so i use that every single day basically and that uses cpu and then you've got gpu graphics processing unit which is anything to do with graphics so a lot of my graphic design software runs off the gpu because they use a lot of graphics so things such as photoshop after effects premiere pro blender all of those like 3d modeling softwares those all use gpu so you need a higher gpu for those type of things personally i use equal parts gpu and cpu on my machine that's why i just got the best of the best for my machine i'm it out and my machine doesn't slow down it freaking it's a trojan it works so well i can have so many things running at one time and it doesn't delay or stop my work process again i'll go back to it in our line of work time is money and i don't have time to be sitting around waiting for this like spinning beach ball of death to disappear so that's why i invest in really good equipment really good machines and make sure that my machine has the capabilities to run the programs that i need to run every single day and this way i can have you know six eight things open at one time and it's still running beautifully hi guys i'm just hopping in quickly i am editing the video right now and i realized i forgot to say something you don't have to get a mac machine i think the most important thing that you should watch out for is how much ram you get on your machine so i would not go anything less than eight gigs of RAM. 8 is like the absolute minimum. Ideally, I would say 16 is probably best. As I said, I have 32 gigs of RAM, but try to stick above 8 gigs of RAM. Anything lower than that, you are going to have a very slow machine. If you have any other questions about what types of specs for your computer and that sort of stuff, just drop them in the comments. And while I'm here behind the scenes, I'll also mention I use Notion for basically running my entire business, for scripting YouTube videos, for running business stuff, money stuff, planning, to-do lists, anything like that. This is not sponsored as well. I just use their product every single day for my business. So as you can see here, I've got the script open from the video that I'm busy doing so you can see all the script points that I need to do and it's connected directly to my external hard drive as you can see I'm using my keyboard I'm using my mouse that I love yeah okay continue the next topic I want to talk about is how to get clients well before you even think about reaching out to clients or applying to any sort of jobs you need to design a good quality portfolio first your portfolio should show a few case studies that you have done even if you've never worked with real clients these can be passion projects but as long as it is a case study and I would suggest creating case studies based on the type of clients that you want to attract or potentially want to work with. For example, if you know that you want to work with fitness people, do something in the fitness realm. If you want to work with wedding designers, make all your portfolio stuff catered to people that will be involved in weddings. So florists, hair and makeup people, I don't know, wedding dress designers and all sorts of stuff. Do branding and projects around those, packaging for those. You will curate your portfolio to work with the type of clients that you want to attract. For your portfolio, you don't need to have anything fancy, but you do need to take pride in it. I personally have a website, www.hansila.com. I own that website, it's my domain. This is where people can see my work, where they can contact me, where they can get to know me. But you don't necessarily have to have a paid site like this. I would suggest it if you are taking things more seriously, but if you're starting out, a free website will work fine. You can also create free portfolios on Behance or on Dribbble if you don't have the money to pay for one yet. And you can also create a presentation portfolio document. So just like make a nice, beautiful, long digital presentation where they can click, 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 click. Make sure that you export it as pages though, not spreads, because trying to look at a spreads presentation, that's not fun. So export it in pages if you do do the presentation, the digital presentation route. Please do not print out a portfolio book. I do not recommend 
having a printed portfolio. We don't really look at paper anymore. People work remotely, they work online, and we don't need all this random extra excess paper being used and printed, you know, save the trees. A lot of people won't even look at printed portfolios, always make it digital, especially in this line of work and day and age. People want to see that you can work in digital. Now, getting back to finding clients, my number one piece of advice would probably be to find a social media platform that you like and post your work on it. For me personally, I used Instagram a lot. This is where I started my business and I got up to 75, 80% of my clients from Instagram. Now that I've began posting on YouTube and it's starting to take off, which is really, really exciting. I am now starting to see clients coming from YouTube, which is really great because that is kind of part of my grander plan of things. If you don't post your work, how will people see you? How will they see what you can do? So either Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Dribble, Behance, whatever platform you prefer, find it and post on it. I would also suggest setting up a LinkedIn profile. The free version is perfectly fine. I use the free version and post your portfolio, your work experience, all of that jazz, fill it up, populate it, make it look nice and pretty. And then from there, you will be able to apply for various contract positions. Or if you want to work in an agency, you can even find agencies that are hiring. And that's how you can find either freelance jobs or client agency jobs. And you can also grow your network that way. Now, if you get your first client, how much should you be charging? Well, this is another loaded question and I could actually make a whole video on this probably if this is something that you'd be interested. So let me know in the comments if you want to see a video like this. Some designers charge at an hourly rate, some designers charge package deals and some designers charge a flat rate. It really just depends on the designers and it differs from project to project, from client, designer, this, that, whatnot. There are so many factors involved in charging clients. Personally, I like to create a custom package for each individual client based on their exact needs and the deliverables and the project scope. And then any additional revisions that have to be made beyond the project scope are then charged at an hourly rate, which is obviously discussed with them prior to that happening. But it really depends on your design skills, the client's needs, the deliverables, the project scope, the timeline, and all sorts of other factors. But I can and say don't underprice yourself but also don't go charging thousands of dollars on like your first client <laughs> because you're just starting out so you got to find that sweet spot in between but the more you establish yourself the more you grow your business the more confident you become and the easier it gets to figure out your worth how much your time is worth and what you should and shouldn't be charging i would suggest doing some research on the type of clients that you want to work with and have a look at like the usual amount that they're willing to pay for certain services but that's why it's also good to create maybe like a three-tier package because having two to three packages at different price points allows you to cater to different types of clients with different budgets and by offering package deals you're no longer competing with other designers but you're competing with your own prices so you can have like a low tier medium tier and then a high tier like really expensive and whichever one they end up choosing you're just competing with your own prices it's instead of giving them one price and then they're like okay well that designer does it cheaper so i'll go there at least by giving them three package deals that is like maybe a piece of advice you can you can go with is offering tiers and that way they are a bit more open to accepting one of your package deals now you have just finished a project for a client but how do you actually give those designs to your client what files what formats do you need what do they need how should i set up the files i have actually created a video all about this it's a video all on file naming client file management what files to give your clients so you can check out that video over here or here one of the two but i do have a video on that so you can go see that video because i think this video is getting really long now i also want to offer some graphic design resources to you guys just to help out a bit more in your learning and becoming a graphic designer process personally i use Envato elements every single day this is not sponsored by the way they're not paying me to say this i just love their products and i use them literally every single day in my business i use them for all sorts of graphic assets so fonts uh, mock-ups graphic templates 3d models or assets that i may need they have stock photos stock videos like the whole shebang it's amazing it's all on one platform i have left a link in the description of this youtube video if you want to check it out you can go see there what their subscription options are but yeah i highly suggest it especially for their mock-ups mock-ups are so important when you're presenting work to clients i'm actually going to make a video all about this how to present your work to clients how important it is to present your work beautifully so that'll be in another video i'm not going to go into it but 
check out Envato Elements if you're interested. I also use Pactora for all my packaging design briefs and packaging clients. I recently started using them, maybe like three months ago. They reached out to me and they actually offered a discount code. So if you use my code Hansila, you get 20% off your subscription. But I've been using their platform for a couple of months and I'm really, really enjoying it. I've used it for two different clients already and they have a bunch of packaging mockups, 3D animations, 3D scene builder, dial lines that you can download, which is so nice. So you don't have to sit there creating dial lines. You can find a beautiful one and there'll be a mockup and a scene for it and a 3D animation for it and the, the dial lines, which is really nice with all the, the crease lines, the trim lines, the bleed lines, all of that information measurements alice it's all there so that's really nice so if you're interested in checking out pactora i did make a video on i'll put it in here i made a video using pactora for the first time but if you want to get 20 percent off your subscription don't forget to use my discount code hansila at checkout for 20 percent off and that link's also in the description of this video number three will be graphic design youtube channels they are a great way to learn so such as my youtube channel for example i offer a lot of educational resources for graphic designers specifically beginner graphic designers and just this is a great way to learn how to improve your graphic design skills you can see how other graphic designers run their business how they deal with clients how they get clients how they work with certain things how they solve certain problems their onboarding process their handover process and all of that jazz now, if you're looking to have your own freelance business like me and you are going to be accepting payments from clients or international payments, I would suggest setting up a business bank account. Personally, I use WISE for all my international payments and business payments. It's free to use. There's no monthly costs. And if you use my link in the description of this video, you will get a free bank card. Check that out. I've been using them for quite a while now and I've never had any issues. It's really good. And their fees are so low for international payments, which is amazing so highly suggest using wires and last but not least design books i know we live in a digital paperless world but actual paper books are still really a great way to learn to get inspiration to gather resources get references to improve your graphic design skills there are so many great graphic design books out there that can teach you the fundamentals and basics of graphic design so i would definitely suggest looking into investing some good graphic design books lastly as designers we never stop growing we never stop learning. Graphic design is a constantly changing career. As the world evolves, so does communication. And that's what we do. We visually communicate. So as designers, we have to keep learning. We have to keep up with these trends. We've got to keep up with all these things that are coming and changing. And like, it's crazy. The world is, whoop. <laughs> the world is so fast paced so as designers we always have to keep learning learning new software learning new skills you must remember that you need to also learn how to market yourself how to sell yourself how to make your portfolio how to run a business if you want to be a freelancer how to grow your client network how to reach out to clients how to say hey i think you need new branding and so on you have to be motivated to learn you have to be proactive in your career it's very important go out there you've got to put yourself out there if you want to grow in your career you can climb that little ladder you've got to constantly be thinking of new ways to create new ways to innovate new ways to do things and if you put in the work you will reap the benefits i want to end off by saying remember that every single decision that you make in graphic design is considered there is a reason behind every single decision graphic designers make in their designs graphic design is an amazing career if you enjoy a new challenge every single day if you enjoy doing something new every single day you have a new challenge a new brief a new client they want this they want that they want this but they also want this and you got to put it in you got to make it simple do this do that they want 10 different colors but then you got to fight back and say listen i think two will be enough <laughs> so you got to stand your ground in what you believe you got to be able to firmly say to the client listen this is what the best decision for your business is and why we are constantly solving problems every single day and it's a different problem every single day we're working with new clients often sometimes we'll hop on a job and they'll say cool we need it tomorrow like help we're often on tight deadlines tight timelines you need to have amazing time management skills you need to be able to manage various tasks at one time and also remember all the tiny little details you can't let something slip as graphic designers we have so much going on in our mind but it's our job to take all of this everything and create one beautiful simple design because all the small things are just as important as the big things if you enjoyed this video if you found it helpful please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more graphic design content like this if you thought this was interesting if you want to know more and check out this video if you want to learn more about graphic design my processes how i do things how i run my business i think this will be quite a cool video for you to watch i hope you have an amazing day wherever you are in the world and i'll see you soon
Bye.